as per usual, I received a review copy of this game for free from Keymailer and the devs, but all opinions are my own, and I was not paid to say this game was good. Alright, this one's going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. Grippy Golf is a sports slash precision platformer slash puzzle hybrid, and honestly, I'm here for the ride. There's no story here. What you get is a stage-based golf game with a big gimmick. After doing the usual swing to get your ball into play, that's where things change. You then have open camera controls tied to your mouse and a crosshair. Pressing the spacebar then fires your ball off in the direction of the crosshair and you're going to need this extra level of control because all the holes are hole in one par. In addition to your input, there are also things such as boost arrows to help you get your way to the hole. Now, these boost arrows also reset your ability to fire your ball in a direction, so that's how you're going to make your way through these stages. The best comparison I could draw would be calling this the neon white of golfing. One other neat mechanic is right from the Katamari Damashi series, where the name Grippy Golf comes from. Your ball can also pick up certain objects, assuming you've already grabbed enough stuff and you have enough weight. This leads into the actual thing that keeps eating up my time here in Grippy Golf, the challenges. After you finish a hole, you'll get the standard stage finished rundown screen, where it'll give you a reward of up to three stars that can be used in a golf shop to purchase cosmetics. You'll notice there's a sign over challenges with a big lock that says two stars, and signs that say three stars over your time in the leaderboards for the course. You'll have to hit a hole in one to grab your two star rating, and then you'll be tasked with something along the lines of get a hole in one with two large traffic cones attached to your ball, or reach the hole with more than 150 kilograms of weight. Grab yourself a hole in one while completing the challenge, and that's when I would say you've truly beaten the hole you're playing. I've been finding myself resetting repeatedly just to try and claw my way a little bit higher on the leaderboards. At time of writing, I haven't been able to beat any of the dev's high scores, but I got dang close on a couple of holes. This makes for an extremely addictive gameplay loop of trying to find the best route to not only get a hole in one, but also grab some arbitrary refuse around the stage. This can be a lot more difficult in practice than it sounds. There are a few cases where this required me to blast myself off with a booster, snap my camera around extremely quickly, then use the spacebar to fire myself backwards to grab some items. This gives a surprising amount of depth to finding the solution, and having to use twitch timing and aiming to pull off your route in the most effective way possible. As the game goes on, more mechanics and devilish course designs help push the difficulty higher and higher, driving you to hone your skills and strive for the sweet, sweet top of that leaderboard. Now, the music is good, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing to write home about. It's there, it's pleasant, but it's very much more of a vein of generic golf game 3. wave than something else. It really blends in with all the cursing you'll be doing when you miss a leaderboard topping score by 0 .03 seconds for the 25th time in a row, so that's a plus. The graphics fall into the same camp. They're serviceable, but not runaway gorgeous. There's some nice lighting and particle effects, and the course variety from world to world is very fun, but honestly, everything is just in service of getting the ball into the hole. Now, saying that about the graphics, I was very surprised to see that the menus were pushing my 3060 Ti to about 85% usage at 1080p. Once I hit the course, everything seemed to level out for World 1 and 2, and it was taking a much more reasonable 12-50% to 50 of my GPU, depending on how much stuff was on screen at any given time. Then this again changed when I hit course 3, and everything from there on dipped down to about 35 to 50 frames per second and pinned my GPU usage to 100%. There's definitely some kind of optimization issue here, and I would urge the devs to look into it. If you have a less powerful graphics card, you may run into some issues here. Another issue I had is that there was no option to change the resolution. With the frame rate issues I was having, I doubt that I would have wanted to push the resolution any higher than what I was currently running at, but it would have been nice to have the option. This is especially crucial when you're attempting to run this on slightly weaker hardware, and dialing back the resolution is the last chance to get a playable frame rate. Now this game was built in Unreal 5. That means that older cards will not play this game at all. Anything that doesn't have DirectX 12 support just will not run this, I'm sorry to say. You're going to want to check out the demo to make sure that this game runs on your computer if you're rocking older hardware. And now for my final thoughts. Grippy Golf is a very fun precision and twitch reflex based platformer in the sneaky disguise of a golf game. This puppy is 100% skill based, so get ready to get good if you want to hit that top time to reach the endorphin injecting leaderboard. I'm already hooked. The gameplay loop got me. My little chimp brain wants to see my username at the top of the leaderboard above the name of the company that made the game, and I don't think I'm going to be able to stop that reaction. I get the feeling that most other people are going to react this way too, to be honest with you. Despite some optimization issues and lack of user controls, I would still highly recommend giving the demo a shot to make sure that your computer can handle it. 
Do yourself a favor and go pick up Grippy Golf if you're competitive and like showing off your brain power and quick reflexes because hot dang is a fun experience. And as always, thank you so much for watching, it really means a lot. If you like my reviews or gameplay videos, please leave a like and subscribe for more stuff in the same vein. Alright, have a good one. Bye!